Uh, so I just want to officially say um, a quava. Welcome everyone um, to Nana's workshop. Um, first of all, give thanks to the founders and the um, organizers for the Black Sustainability Summit, the 2021 Black Sustainability Summit. This is our disclaimer. Trust and verify. All of our presenters are doing very solid work. Their affiliation with our summit is due to our alignment with their goals and mission. I'll say to that. The presentations provided at our summit they do not constitute an endorsement of speakers' views, products, or services. And then we want to give thanks to our booze, uh, Black-owned and operated sponsors, Black Handcraft, uh, the Collard Green Festival, Sustainable Community Solutions Work, uh, Emerging uh, Eco Womanist Institute and Adiki Aya International Development and Indigenous Knowledge Institute. Give thanks. And to also give thanks to all of the Black Sustainability Summit Committee of Volunteers and Organizers. Medasi Pa 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 for all of your hard work, collective team hard work indeed. So once again, I'd like to officially welcome everyone uh, to this particular current session with uh, Nana, uh, Dr. Nana Siti Opio. And the title of her session is Living, Healing, and Being Sustainable Can Maintain Your Economic Leverage. Mm -hmm. A few things before we get started, please. First of all, I think it's already done, but just in case, make sure that your mic, everyone's mic is muted um, or uh, the tech staff will mute them for you. Um, everything is being recorded as we speak, but this is just an official announcement that the, the session will be recorded. Um, so if you do happen to miss part of it or you end up missing all of it, you will have the opportunity to listen to it and watch it again. Um, as you join the call, we would love for you, and you can do this now as I'm speaking, go ahead and drop your name and location in the chat box so that there'll be um, efficient follow-up. And as I'm speaking, Nana, your PowerPoint presentation is already up, just checking. Uh, no, there is no PowerPoint presentation. Oh. It's oh. just me presenting through my words, okay? Yes, and, and we were definitely taking, I, when I entered the room, I was definitely taking it in. Um, this, um, I guess we can say that just in case, Nana City may, if she has to dip, dip out, there's a very worthy reason why, because there's an ancestor that is just about to be reborn and it could happen. Uh, the labor and, the, and the, uh, the whole process could begin any minute now. Um, but in the meantime, I'm so glad that Nana is here and that things are going according to divine time. Uh, questions, if you have questions and comments, and if you're looking for some resources from Nana, there will be a 15 minute question and answer period after, um, after the end of her official presentation. And Nana, you should be getting some type, you will be getting a nod or a ding dong to, or me saying that uh, it's time for a Q&A. And then those of you who are listening right now, you have different ways of joining her. You can raise your hand, use that little device to raise your hand. You can unmute your mic and just come on the mic and ask the question, or you definitely can put your question into the chat box and uh, one of us will catch it and present it to Nana. I'm your moderator for today uh, and I'm honored. My name is Injadeka Kamo. And again, the title of this session is Living, Healing and Being Sustainable can, be, can maintain your economic leverage. And of course, without any further delay, we will go ahead and honor and listen to Dr. Nana Siti Opio. I'm going to actually, real quick, Nana, allow me to read your bio. 
So everyone um, has the opportunity to appreciate you like the rest of us do and understand the depth of your, our story, your history. Uh, Nana Siti is a naturopathic doctor. Excuse me, I just need to move some things out of the way. Nana Siti is a naturopathic doctor, a traditional grand midwife, a basu, an elder counselor. With 50 years as traditional midwife and 45 years as a naturopath physician, she is treasured by the communities she serves. You can check out her Science of Manifestation audio and video presentation on blog radio or hear her podcast on Artists for Reproductive Justice. She also has contributed photos and audio as part of the Catching Light project. And as you can see, she is part of the University of Mawia. And now, Nana, without any further delay, please continue. You have the floor, and thank you. Thank you. Greetings. This is Nana Siti, and I give thanks for the ability to have this time with you all. I thank my ancestors, and I thank the little one who's due to come soon giving me this opportunity to share and um, just impart something that I've learned through my years of practicing living and delving into holistic healing. One of the things that I do recognize about holistic healing is that when we are, um, when we are waiting for our healing place, we also open the door for us tapping into our ancestors. And those ancestors are waiting for us to live in our tradition, live within the scope of what works best for us. And what works best for us is healing through the elements of earth, fire, which is the sun, earth is the soil, the trees, the nature that surrounds us. And when we live with the elements and we live with giving us the ability to honor our cosmic I am, we open the door for more trial, trials and tribulations because that door opens to teach us, to lessen us. Um, one of the main things we must learn is about our melanin. Our melanin, fantastic. It is our portal to our metaphysical dimension. And when we open that portal, we understand the process. That portal is already there from birth. It is given to us by our parents and their parents and their parents, and it, it continues on. And due to the fact that we are living and breathing and accepting and honoring our gift of healing, we recognize that is, this is indigenous. This is the rites of passage. This is from the cosmic I am. And through all the nature elements, we have healing. We have our sun that allows us to heat our foods from the seeds we plant. And it, heating our foods allow the roots to impart their, in, their energy into the soil, which gives us the opportunity to grow and nurture our loving medicinal herbs, our loving seeds, vegetation, fruits, coconuts, dates, you name it, seaweeds. Well, we have to go to the water for the seaweeds. But nature provides everything. And living in a holistic um, and sustainable way through our healing is a door that opens for the benefit of all of us. First, we must not forget our responsibility. Our responsibility is honoring our ancestors. We give homage to them, which means we will be in crises when we don't take care of ourselves. And that means seeing a practitioner. That means learning the skills of healing. That means having the opportunity to grow explicitly for the well being of our generations through our DNA. Our vessels absorb, digest, and assimilate all the nutrients we take in. And it's not just the nutrients we take in from the soil, it's the nutrients of the oxygen we breathe, 
when we are around trees and outside. It is standing barefoot on the ground and feeling grounded in the earth underneath our feet because because that's a healing modality. It is also about us learning how to maintain ourselves through our culture. I give thanks. Again, um, I'm gonna add and go back a little bit just to make sure everybody has heard the beginning. Usually things change when you start all over. So bear with me for a minute. In this part of our living and healing, we are honoring our ancestors and our cosmic I am. And when you honor that from your highest, you gain so much. You are strengthened by the elements of nature, through earth, through wind, through fire, through air, through our melanin, through the ethers. When you are healing and living sustainable, you gain so much because you honor ourselves through our lineage and you give thanks, you're in gratitude. The fact that you're living through holistic and living sustainable is gratitude in and of itself. One of the things that I have noticed over the years is that through our melanin, we open the portal through our metaphysical components. And those are the gifts that we are given from a very high place. Determining how you consider your spiritual high place, whether you call it the creator, Allah, Jah, however that source comes through, you are blessed to have, and I do mean bliss to have the ability to understand our melanin. It is our portal through life. When we use the foods that come through the sun that are heated or cooked by the sun, which means the seeds have been planted, the earth has been tilled to prepare, to make room for these growths that are coming forward. Then as time goes on in watering and taking care and letting the dew drench the plants, as well as our Ourselves watering, we are allowing ourselves to grow and watch the growth and harvest of what we have brought forth. For those that don't farm, when you go and receive the goods from these farms or from the waters, the seaweeds come from the waters, the fruits and vegetation comes from the trees and the bushes and the vines, we also are honoring our highest form. Our vessels are used to absorb digest, they are there to assimilate, and through these natural processes, we are living and healing and being sustainable. When we take in organic produce, we are definitely up in our game because organic means that it is not adulterated with chemicals. I know some of you already know this, but it is also good to remind ourselves to increase our intake of those things that are considered organic and make sure you check the labeling to see where the organic produce or products have come from. In the process of our healing, we must not forget our responsibility to the aspect of contacting a practitioner that can offer us the healing modalities that benefit us. Now, some of us are already practitioners. Some of us have been trained and skilled in the arts of yoga. Comedic yoga is a healing form. Acupuncture is another healing form. There is Ayurveda medicine. There is African traditional healing herbs and medicine. There are many modalities that we can come through to gain our knowledge and healing, either as the practitioner or as the client, we must never forget that we have three laboratories at our disposal. The first laboratory is the one that our practitioners have, the place where they work, the place where they offer their services. That's a laboratory because in that laboratory is the skills and wherewithal for them to be able to maintain your well being through their assessment of your challenges. The second um, laboratory is your kitchen. Your kitchen is where you prepare these fantastic foods that we make. Some of us cook our foods, some of us 
indulge in eating the foods in its natural state, the raw state. Some of us decide to be in between both worlds. And in the process of eating and healing, we also maintain our responsibility to be able to contact our practitioner when we are not feeling well. When we neglect that responsibility, we take away from our ability to do the healing in a sustainable way. Uh, research through our culture, it's important to know your culture, to know and understand where our traditions come from. Some of us might know our lineage and know the exact place from our family um, trail. Um, some of us don't, but in taking on our indigenous African ways, we are never left without the knowledge given to us. We must also remember that is a responsibility that we must fill ourselves to our highest. I also like to share that when we do these optimum health and healing modalities that we must operate from our breath. And our breath is about as we close our eyes, we function on, as we inhale, our abdomens come out. And I'd like if you can inhale right now, bringing your abdomen out. As you exhale, suck the abdomen back in as if you are touching your spine. Focus on your breathing because through your breathing, you assist in your healing. Focus on your intentions. What are your intentions? How do you see your intentions? This is all about our ability to do healing. When we breathe and we function on our breathing, and we must always remember when we inhale, our stomachs and abdomens extend out. When we exhale, our abdomens go in. They go in because we are releasing the waste. They come out to add more oxygen in, and we have space for that oxygen. So it's very important to focus on your breathing. We have another aspect of our healing and living sustainable, and that's our ability to manifest. When we manifest, we are centering ourselves. We have planted the seeds of intention through our breath. Remember always the breath is what gives us those moments of clarity, centering our mind and spirit, giving us the ability to focus. When we are focused, we then do not travel anywhere, but stay in one place to fulfill whatever obligation we are working on. A part of our living and healing is the intention of bringing forth our manifestations. Our manifestations are the things and goals that we work towards. Some people do vision boards, some people manifest through their prayers and meditation. There are different ways to place manifestation. There is not just one way. I am offering one way because that's the way that I have used and it works very well. I haven't done a vision board, but I've done a vision board in my head, not outright. So through my manifestation, I focus on the goals I work towards. And it doesn't have a date. So you can't place a date on it, five years, 10 years. You can estimate you would like it to take place within a space of time. That space of time is not dictated by us. That space of time is dictated by a higher source when all the places and all the components are put together. And that is being sustainable, not feeling frustrated because something hasn't moved in the light we have been looking for. We also must remember through manifestation, we must share it through our voice. Our voice has long waves, which means it travels in a primordial, shorter distance, but longer ebbs and flows. Our voice has short waves and the short waves travel further. They are closer ebbs and flows, but they also send out our messages further out in the universe. And we do that through our auras. We do that through our intentions, 
We do that through the ethers in our manifestation. When we work with our voice, we also can sing. We also can say sounds as ah. Those are sounds for healing. And those are basic sounds that get us to travel and prepare for meditation as well as for manifestation. The sounds open the portals to the universe through our melanin. Remember our melanin is considered our metaphysical, again, our metaphysical journey into the beyond, which is not the beyond for us because we live in the past, present and future in all one setting. I must remind ourselves that when we are going on this journey, we can decide to be the practitioners by getting the training through individuals that look like us, sound like us, and be us, because that's important to get the traditions. We must honor those qualitative modalities because they are the things that will move us and allow us to take care of ourselves. We will never ever be without. That's just the way life gives us. It gives us this because this is who we are and it protects us and keeps us out of harm's way. When we step away from our traditions, we then open the door for our ancestors to step back. We're not allowing them to guide us. And that is so important. Um, we are not grown, I am not grown. And in that process, I'm still growing. So in my years of being out here, I opened the door and allowed my ancestors to speak to me. And I, in turn, speak to them by sharing what it is that I am looking forward to maintain and to honor. I also said that when we focus on our breath, we have frequency, we have our voices to be louder, or we have our voices to be softer and more quieter and more subtle. Because when we speak with our voice in a such subtle way, we ought another open another portal. See, we have many portals and vortexes that we can go through. And we don't realize that these portals open just by the fact that we exist through these portals and again, through our melanin. When we focus on our breathing and our intention, we allow the portals to open. We allow the foods to nourish us. We allow the water that we take that is pure and has not been tainted. The spring water, if we have a processor with distilled water, but we try not to use too many machines because that distorts the water. Getting the water as pure as possible is one of the best ways to maintain our fluid intake. From there, we can make our teas. From there, we can prepare our foods. And for that point, we use equipment that purify the water should you get water that isn't clear. And that's also another stage of being sustainable. Getting a water purifier that does not use any um, electricity, it just operates from pure gravity. That uh, product is not from us, but it definitely works well when I travel out the country. And when I'm here and I'm, my water is not the safest water, or I'm in a place where I'm getting water that has been treated. Our water, our foods, our medicinal herbs, our being out in nature, walking, riding, Allowing ourselves to have the ability to grow is one of the things that we must do. We work from a low vibration when we don't take care of ourselves. There is no excuse for not rending ourselves well and maintaining our well being. When we are ill and we are not operating from our highest, we use that as a distortion, which means physical disease is right following close behind. I want to make sure that when we do the work at hand, we also operate from the level of integrity and being 
with justice because that travels and takes you for the long haul. That is what endures your ability to practice your healing modality. That is you being sustainable. And we have some individuals that feel it's a shortcut, but we also have our karmetic debt that comes through not living a sustainable and holistic healing way. We don't wanna live that way. We don't want ourselves to not be in alignment. That just presents a very negative and it distorts our um, genes. It functions on a very low vibration and it throws our whole family um, and we have healing to do. We have constant healing to do. It throws our family in chaos. And yes, there is dysfunction. And yes, there is chaos. We don't want to add to it. We want to understand what it is we need to do. And we want to live in our highest. And that's work. It, it, it doesn't get handed to you without the ability to work. But this is work that will take care of you the rest of your life. I also want to share that there's a modality that I pass on to those who I work with. And this modality is a very simple modality. And I'm going to bring up in front of you bills, dollar bills. And I'm showing you these bills because there's a way to generate, very simple, our income just by a folding method. This has been around for a long time. An elder showed me this many, many moons ago, and it has been my blessing, and I pass it to everybody else because it's everybody else's blessing. I have been encouraged and by design to pass it on. So I'm going to show you the front of the bills. All of them have to be aligned. So I'm going to have to do it backwards. So you take your right hand, and you're bringing your money back to you. I'm not using my right hand. So I got to hold it the front way so I can do it the correct way. So what you're doing is with the money facing front and horizontal, you take your right hand, bring your money back to you. You do it again. Take your right hand and bring it back to you. Then you take that right hand and go to the top of the bills and crease and fold and bring it back to you. This is a way to keep our currency. These are resources that come to us from a high place. When you're ready to give out your money, you go back and open the bills. Not opening the bills when you're ready to hand your money through the, for the exchange will stop you from receiving your money back again. Now, you're not going to receive it back from the same party you've given it to, and it keeps the circulation. Remember, that it is the right hand with the money facing you that brings it back to you, that brings it back to you, and that goes to the top of the money, folds it underneath to bring it back to you. Everything is to bring back to you. These are natural ways of bringing our bills. These are not, currency doesn't have a name on it. We can't do this with a check that has a name on it. And even if it's a blank check, it's not going to be what you need. You have to use the actual bills. That's a resource that generates our income. That's living sustainable, taking your money, folding it, bringing it to the level it needs to go, and then honoring and understanding the process by which it can come back to you through whatever means it needs to come back. That is one aspect of our resources that I, I really felt I needed to share. I do it already. And I feel that every opportunity I get, I wanna keep it going. Resources like grants. I'm a part of a group of three individuals who applied one of my students, I also teach. One of my students applied, applied for a grant from the city of, um, of uh, uh, Atlanta. And the grant was about doing holistic healing. And she was given the opportunity to do it. I am one of the three people that are on the holistic initiative. And if everyone wants to check it out, you would go to the website, Danny, D A N N I, Unwind Holistic. When you go to that website, there is a segment called Danny 
unwind holistic initiative. That initiative allows you to be able to see the three practitioners and what they offer. Bliss offers comedic yoga. This is a one-time healing session. Danny slash Danielle offers massage. And I offer the ability to have uh, nutritional healing, uh, well baby checkups, pregnancy, and elder care. This is a one session time and it is open for those in three communities in Atlanta. But I would like to say those three communities have not moved forward and they are the Pittsburgh area, the Summer Hill area, and also the Grant Park area. So I would like to pass it on to those who are in Atlanta up until the month of May, 2022, the ability to have a session. And that's just to let you know that writing a grant to the local town or city uh, government has, has blessings coming forward because their initiative is to cut back on some of the funding. Now, I get paid through the grant, a stipend. The other two individuals get the stipend. Of course, the person who wrote the grant gets the more money and that is okay. Nobody has to pay on the outside because that's their services have been covered. So you have the ability to fold your money. You have the ability to open the door for applying for a grant or being a recipient of a grant which means that you have put forth your ability to tap into your sustainable resources. I understand that through the ability to utilize these resources, you can go to all oh, the schools that train individuals in the healing process. You can go and see about tapping into resources through whether it's financial resources or in kind, they can help and assist in many ways. Sometimes it's not always the ability to, sometimes it's not always your ability to uh, get the money right at hand. Sometimes it's the in kind, space to do a garden, um, supplies. Um, there are many different ways that you can tap into what you are looking for for your grant, no matter how you do it. Um, some individuals write that they're doing work out of the country and they can apply in foundations of color. And when they do apply to those foundations, they are able, I've also gotten grant money through uh, applying outside to community organizations for let's say Haiti after the earthquake. Um, so um, going to Honduras with the birthing project there are many ways that we can tap into um, our ability to generate income. I'd like to also say that through the addition initiatives and going to different places to see where you can get funding, you also need to go into training for those who want to further their skill set and honor their development. There are places that you can travel to. There are places you can contact to learn, learn more about the healing modality so you can further your skill set. I do want to put a statement out here that isn't the best statement, but it's what I need to do. There's a group, they are called, and I'm not against this group, they are called D O U L A. The term is doula. The etymology of the term means female slave. And I don't believe that the women who are doing that understand, really truly understand what that means. We have been duped into the process of not being traditional healers or traditional midwives. And they're gonna perpetrate the term so that women who can be of service to other women limit their abilities and don't further the art of midwifery or the naturopathic design of healing. We must understand that we can go further than what we are given 
and that we must question when we get a name put on something and where that comes from and who considers that name and where the money comes from to be a part of that. We are being duped into not being traditional midwives. Each state had between four to 7,000 healers, holistic healers operating. Chiropractors were once in abundance and they are not the same. They are now, the door has opened for them, but the midwives, they want the women to be doulas, to inadvertently have short-term training and then start delivering babies. And I really had to say something on that because that is a detriment, that is a lack of integrity, and that is coming from a low vibration. Honor your tradition and be the person of a higher vibrational level by learning the craft of healing through a higher modality, which means you offer more to our mommies who do not care, who are not being truly cared about by the medical profession. And I do have to say that with the utmost unapologetic way because we are not being taken care of. We are being abused and not respected. And I want the women out there to understand that. I do not wanna take away from their learning process, but I do want them to understand that everyone must grow to their higher vibrational level. And that is not a high vibrational level. There is more to it than that. And I will leave it at that because I don't wanna end it on the note like that, but I do need to say that because I represent um, reproductive justice, that is not reproductive justice when you follow and become a part of a medical design system and you're not operating from your truly holistic place. Giving women herbs is great, but there's more to it than that. And you're not gonna know that until you have furthered your studies and become the higher traditional midwife, the higher naturopath, bush doctor, the higher yogi slash basu, yoga, uh, comedic yoga teacher. There are modalities that you can come through that will really give you the blessings that you need and will take care of you. You're honoring your ancestors. Why wouldn't you be taken care of? Your resources are abundant. It is the understanding of how to tap into those sources and to trust intuitively that you will not be left hanging. One of the things my students ask, how will I make a living? You will make a living by your ability to have integrity. You will make a living by your ability to honor your skill set and learn and quantify that you are apt to be able to do these things. Take inventory of what you have learned already. Take inventory of what you need to do and grow into yourself. And then for those who need the healing, we must honor our traditional ways. They are the only ways that give us a sustainable way to maintain ourselves and be able to honor the best in the best of us. I do wanna make sure that we understand we have responsibility, we have integrity, we have unapologetic, unapologetic ways of living through our tradition. We do that, our ancestors protect us. We are not gonna be caught up in the judicial system. We're not gonna be caught up in going to jail. We are not gonna be caught up in negative ways because we, our ancestors will protect us from harm. You have to feel secure in yourself and understand that this is a way that we honor our highest. In that, I want to make sure in closing that we really look at our being sustainable. Are we doing the things? Are we wearing the clothing? Are we eating the foods? Are we breathing the fresh air? Are we getting outside and not sitting in an air-conditioned home or at a car? Are we rolling down the windows when we drive? Do we ride a bike? Do we understand the living aspect of ourselves? Do we ground ourselves in the soil? Do we eat the foods 
that are organic? Do we taste the water that is pure and unadulterated? And I'm probably going to have to end this. So I, I want to make sure that we are doing the things because we are totally in our highest when we live the life we are living. I am an example of that. And I honor my ancestors. I honor those who have made this journey before me. I honor those who have presented and have the opportunity to give thanks to those who have created an outlet for us to be able to hear each other, see each other and experience our sustainable living through our homes, through our clothing, through the foods we eat and through all that is given to us. That is for our highest and we must honor that. We have no other place to go. This is our salvation. When all else fails us, this will never. Our melanin is there for that reason. And we must remember that. There are books we can read. There are stories. Our melanin is the key to our freedom. And it has always been the key to our freedom. We sometimes don't think about that. But it is part of our sustainability because it's sustaining us when we take care of ourselves. I truly want to honor and give thanks. I want to just share, and I feel like I've probably left some things out, but in that process of leaving some things out, I wanted to share basic information. There are times when we say all the things we need to say, and there are times we say some of the things we need to say. And I felt like I've given you a glimpse. I, I want to give thanks for the ability just to be in this place. I give thanks for that ancestor that is coming to allow me to do healing work on myself before the summit and also to be able to do the summit. Um, I've been taught by a, another healer, a comedic um, teacher that I can talk to these ancestors. So since he has said that I can talk to these ancestors, I did talk and ask, could I do this summit? And um, the ancestor said yes. So I feel in good hands. I give thanks and I really um, have enjoyed this time with you all and um, just love our people. Peace. And with that being said, everyone, um, would you repeat after me? You can come on your mic or just say it um, behind your mic, but please let's say Ashe. Now, now every word <laughs> is so vital. It's it, every word, every high vibrational word that you uttered today was so on point and so applicable to our lives. Um, so let us hold on. Mate Masie, we must keep what we have heard today. Um, it is now time for the opportunity for you, for all of us to um, ask any questions that we may have. Medasi Pa, thank you for those of you who are putting questions in the chat box as I speak. Um, Nana, I'm going to start off with a question to you, uh, and then I will open it up and read you some questions from our participants. Right. Uh, the money ritual. Some people may say, well, let's do that right now so we can get that. But I, I, there, as you already know, and as you already have spoken to, the money thing is not our highest no. purpose. No. However, it is a means to something. I'd Definitely. like for you to, I would love for you to share a um, profound but simple ritual that all of us can take with us before we leave today. And then follow up with repeating the money ritual so that those of us who joined a little bit later can catch it and, and run with it. Medasi. I give thanks. I'd like to offer this affirmation. I will say it slow. Sometimes I have to pick up the speed of it uh, so I remember. And this affirmation opens for your highest being.
the, the arm of God reaches over people and conditions, controlling the situation and protecting our interests. I will say it again, the long arm of God reaches over people and conditions, controlling the situation and protecting my interest. I offer that to you as an affirmation to utilize when we are in need and not just of money, when we are in need. I will leave it at that. Ashe, medase, pa, 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 nana. And then uh, would, if you care to, would you please repeat the money ritual as well? All right. So again, this is not for us to take and say, whoa, we got a lot of money coming through. It works because it's very simple and we're not talking about greed. We're talking about being able to make our money come back to us. So I'm holding it this way to show you. I have to face it toward me because it works better when I do that. Right hand, you take your money and fold it in half, bring it back to you. Again, right hand, you take your money again and fold it back to you. Right hand goes to the top of the denomination and bring it back to you. As you fold it, that's it. Then you can open it up or you could leave it folded, but you must not hand it out folded. Otherwise you lose out the money. It does not return back to you. It will not return back to you from the same person you gave it to because it is circulating. I give thanks on that one. Midasi Pa, we give thanks as well. And thank you for the clarification. It is definitely not for greed, but it is to maybe fill a void that may be needed in our lives. Um, we do have multiple questions in the chat box. And as you see on the slide, uh, you are also welcome to open up your mic and ask the question directly, um, or you can use the little raise hand um, device in, the, in your dashboard. Um, Nana, we have yes. several questions that are asking you about your contact information. Um, I may have your information on the next slide, but verbally and for the record, and if you care to, um, you can type it in or I'll type it in the chat box. But in general, what is your general contact information so people can reach you? And she asks, are you based in Atlanta? I am based in Atlanta. I'll answer that one first. But that doesn't mean I don't travel and it doesn't mean people can't come to me. Uh, my email address is long, but it is my name. It is O, like an open, P-I-O. S-N-D-A-E-Y-O at gmail.com. My number that I can be reached on is a landline, so don't text on it. It is 843-603-6079. Okay, give thanks. And um, if anybody wants to put that in the chat box while I'll take another question, uh, that would be good. And if not, I will come back and um, put her email address and telephone number in the chat box as well. And that question was, uh, one of the persons was um, Sister Consuela. Uh, and our next question is from Rose. And she says, I would like to know how Nana was led to her purpose. And as the Akan people would say, you're in Krabia. Yes. Uh, my grandmothers. My grandmothers were healers. I hung out. Um, that's what you do when you have grandmothers around you. And they opened the door for my training. I also had a contract this time around to be of service. So they heard the contract and decided to train me. I thought I was just hanging out with my grandmothers and I was, but I also was being trained. So that's how the door opened for me earlier on in life. Oh, 
Okay, Medasi, Medasi. Uh, Rose, thank you very much for that question. I'm glad that you asked it. Um, okay, and we have another question. Well, I'll tell you what, is there anyone who would like to just come on the mic and ask a direct question to Nana City at this time? Please do. Dua, many thanks and praises for this entire opportunity and space that's being held. Um, I feel the power very viscerally. Um, I'm also going to be one of the presenters. So I'm just really grateful for my womb leading me to this um, beloved mama, Nana, <laughs> um, and the power that is held within your womb and that you are radiating. The question that I have for you is about the doula term. And I'm just wondering if you can reiterate and if there's any way to expand a bit, because I intuitively felt disconnected with that term and very concerned um, in my incarnation in this life um, to be a, a truth teller, a truth seeker, a truth beer, to just be in truth that never resonated to me be, to be in my art and something about, I, I couldn't quite put my finger on it and you gave me the full confirmation and I just want to say I, I was always concerned because there were so many sisters tuning into this work and it just felt like even the ones that I personally knew I'm just like you you really and I just felt at that point in my journey that I didn't I didn't want to make that statement without anything tangible but just certain energies that I was very clear should not be doing that work um, and it was very alarming. So if you could just elaborate on that a bit. Yes, I give thanks. What happens is the government has placed money in the hands of different organizations, Family First, uh, March of Dimes, different uh, women can get money just to have training. And what it is is to keep the midwives from becoming, just becoming. And due to the fact that we need the midwives. There are more mommies having babies leaving out of the hospital. COVID has opened many doors and it has always been mommies wanting to birth at home, but COVID made it much more inevitable. What happened is there are women who use the term incorrectly. It is set up that way. And because it's set up with no boundaries other than you can comfort the woman, a midwife doesn't comfort the woman. A midwife empowers the woman. Um, the term is not about healing. The term is about taking the family um, rights away. The grandmother wants to be there for her daughter if she is still around. The father of the child wants to be there for the child. But when the DOULA comes into place, she replaces the grandmother and she replaces the father and she replaces the cousins and aunts that want to prepare food for her. So the term is to be utilized to separate the family and not to grow the family. Midwives grew family. Traditional doctors grew family. Doulas do not grow families. They separate the entity of family, the father, the grandmother, all of those components that make the family the family are pushed back when the woman who is practicing that art, uh, quote unquote, is in the presence. She moves everybody else out and she doesn't empower the woman, she comforts. They, the family member comforts. This is about empowerment. And that's why the term should not be used and women should go and continue training and know that's not a doorway into midwifery. It doesn't lead you to midwifery. You have to then drop all of that knowledge and go in straight and learn the traditions. So that is why the term is not good to use or to act upon. Wow. Yo, Medasi Pa, thank you, Nana. That was, that was empowering to know the truth. Mm -hmm. Ashe. Ashe, oh. 
Uh, Nana and everyone, technically we have about five minutes till the end of this session. Nana City, we have at least two, maybe three more questions. Let's try to fit them in where we can okay. get them. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so the first one is, where would one start the learning process to prepare herbs as medicine? Give thanks. She would then travel, if it's a woman, uh, to uh, learn the herbs, start studying the herbs, start reading from books from Dr. Africa, open the door to the books of the healers you know first and foremost, the healers of color, and then search out those who teach the art of healing. And they are those that do that. I am one. There are many of us out there. You have to search us out to see who resonates well with you. Ashe. 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 Uh, very good. Um, the sources of traditional midwives. So, Nana, you have verbally um, given some information. A website? Do you have, did, did you? Uh, uh, share a website that's kind of like all encompassing for African practitioners at the beginning, midway or uh, advanced, but want to continue in your steps or learn from you. Do you have a website or can you recommend any other source for everyone before they leave today? I, I don't have a website. Um, there's been attempts to do a mid website and nothing has come forward. So I take it as I have to wait a little longer. Um, so the steps would be then make some contacts, call. Um, they are practitioners, depending on what you want to grow into, what it is you want to study. You can call me to ask me some questions. I can direct you to other individuals. Um, you can check around to see who else is teaching and who else is being available to um, render the knowledge right out. And please read our books, make sure you are reading our materials because that is definitely a door opener. And that gives you a clue to who is still out there and who has left us on the ancestor level and recommends who's next to teach you. Yeah, thanks, Nana. Uh, so what I would recommend um, is uh, to either call or email Nana City, both the email address as well as her telephone number has been shared in the chat box. Also, remember to put your own name and contact information in the chat box. Uh, the organizers will make sure that you receive the text, the, the chat text that is being placed in the box right now. Um, Nana, uh, Mama Nobantu also mentions that Queen Afua, who is also an excellent healer, she has very good books. Um, all of them are worthy. Uh, not Mama, did you want to continue? Yes, definitely Queen Afua. Um, sometimes I leave out important people. And interesting note, Queen Afua uh, sometime back was a midwife. She has grown from her midwifery and to her next level. So definitely our books, um, Heal Thyself. She has a series of other books and she has the videos also on activities women can do for their bodies. Um, real quick, there is a belly dance, um, uh, belly dance instructional video. There is a, a comedic yoga, um, instructional video, there are means at our disposal for any knowledge that we would like to tap into. And I give thanks. We give thanks. And those of you, uh, don't forget to put your contact information into the chat box so that you can, your information can be shared. Don't forget to reach out to Nana City. And again, to the organizers of the 2021 um, Black Sustainability Summit, we give thanks to you here. At, don't forget to join the network. There is a new website and new things that are coming down the road in regards to the Black Sustainability Network. Here are some contact information on your screen right now. Hopefully you can see it. And then 
Again, we wanna thank uh, the black owned and operated sponsors uh, for giving everything to make uh, this uh, event possible. And I will share with you before you leave that coming up next um, at, uh, at your time, uh, 10 a.m. to 10.55, the title of the workshop is How Your Clothes Are Killing the Environment, Your Clothes, Things That We Take for Granted. Uh, the speaker is Tanjuria Willis, and uh, we look forward to seeing you um, at that workshop as well. So on that note, mm, heartfelt, medasi pa pa pa, nana, Dr. Siti uh, Opio, and to all of you who joined us today, thank you very much. Thank you.